Hi, everybody. Um, here to talk a little bit about exercise one. Some weeks I'll read a little video which gives supplementary information on the exercise you're writing, uh, possibly because there's something specific I want, possibly because I'm going to give you some kind of model for doing things. I'll have you know that out of uh, courtesy to you, I am changing my clothes from video to video. I've got my Vita Women in Literary Arts shirt, and I've got my updo going here. So I am trying to look stylish for you. Um, so this first part is about exercises in general and uh, logistics for them. What you're going to see is uh, theoretically you'll look at your checklist and it'll say it'll have two checklist items. One is maybe three, read about the exercise. Then there's watch the video on the exercise. Then there's write the exercise. I keep those separate because you may not do them at the same time. But when you're looking for an exercise, you can either click on the link on the checklist, or you can head over to table of contents, internal documents, assignments, and find the word document. So, and then open it up and wind up reading it. And that gives you your information. I am going to, um, well, hold that thought. The videos will all be in the videos folder, which is also internal documents. This video is in the process of being made, so you can't see it yet, but right here below these two videos, you would see more on exercise one. Again, there are links to those from your checklists. Now, and then of course, in your assignments, you will have a list of all the exercises, and those will be what used to be called the drop boxes. That's where you turn them in. Okay. Now, looking at the assignment, uh, all of the exercises, I believe there's seven or eight of them, will have the same starting point, which is, what do I want from you? It might be a couple pages of free text. It might be some bullet points. It might just be, it might be a diagram that you make of something. It might be a little bit of a twine that I want you to work on. Uh, I'll give you a goal, and then I'll give you any notes. Then the exercise is going to be separated into a couple parts, usually. One is a, a kind of thinking part, a conceptual part where you prepare. Uh, here, you're just watching the Chimamanda, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie video, uh, Danger of a Single Story, to talk about where ideas come from. As I mentioned in the welcome video, the interestingness of your ideas is going to have an impact on your writing to some extent. Um, the more things you can put in play, the more interesting possibilities come up from them. So here, you're going to be really thinking about what a story is, what kinds of stories are told, what kinds of stories you'd like to be told. And in a way, if they are stories at all, um, they may be different kinds of fiction writing. Uh, I'll ask you to also imagine if digital frameworks change the way you imagine a work of fiction. Uh, we'll get to that all through the semester, but you might imagine that length comes into play, but also uh, that the idea of a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end gets a little bit more complicated when we're not reading a print book. So first part, read and brainstorm. Second part, write in bullet point form. Here, we're working with bullet points, and what I want you to do is write 10 interesting, evocative ideas that are 15 words or less. Actually, if it's 20 words, I don't care. It's a sentence. I want a sharp, pungent sentence or you know half sentence that intrigues me, that if I saw it as the first sentence, I'd be like, hey, I've got questions. I will talk about this in a minute. These should surprise you or interest you through their content or through their language. Um, that doesn't mean we're saying, you know, like, just by going fanciful, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something that goes against the norm, something that I'm not used to seeing, something that is unusual. Um, so it could be something that lacks, it doesn't have to have a plot, but it has really interesting language, or it could be something that doesn't happen very often, or it could be something that I don't normally see. Um, I'll tell you that the writer Donna, St Donna Tart started The Secret History, uh, which was a best-selling novel, simply because she saw a little girl on a swing, and she was able to describe that little girl, and then she realized that that little girl was, was actually dead. And so The Secret History comes from the perspective of a dead narrator, it starts, just starts with a real pop and interesting. So next, what I want you to do is write, so that's 10 bullet points that are 15 or 20 words or less. And then I want you to write 10 fictional secrets or secret desires. You can read this um, later, 
But the key again is that there's something that I haven't seen before or that is striking or that I can smell or touch or taste in concrete, imagistic, detailed ways. Okay. All right. So let's hold off between B and C here and head over to this. Um, now, the way that you're going to get to this, it may not be right away. You may start with a sentence called, a person walked into a restaurant. And you have this really, you have an idea in your head, and you all this stuff's going on in here. But on paper or on the screen, a person walked into a restaurant, to me, doesn't really evoke anything. I can't see the person. I can't see the restaurant. It's a stock place. It's a trope. So the way to get through that is, is not to say, well, we have no scenes with people walking into restaurants. It's to say, how can we make this interesting? One possibility is that we decide that a restaurant isn't the place we want. So we decide that it's a library or a pet store or, um, you know, the, the house of his friend's sister or, you know, I don't know, um, a park that is closed, a graveyard. Um, the other part is to say, well, what about this int restaurant is really interesting? Well, it's a restaurant for um, a dark restaurant. If you, if you know what those are, there are actually restaurants out there that um, are pitch black and you only smell your food and touch your food, but you can't see. Um, so over time, I'm going to ask questions and I'm going to get more specific. And this is going to, the more specific I get, the more questions I can ask, the more directions my work can go. Well, I'm going to be a little more specific. Gruntville Library. I made up Gruntville. I don't know if it's a real town, but now I'm like, huh, Gruntville, what's this place? I'm going to keep adding information. I don't know if I'm going to use this information, but I'm just trying to generate stuff that gets me. A person wearing muddy boots. Well, now I'm kind of intrigued because people who walk into libraries don't usually have muddy boots. Why do they have muddy boots? Where are they coming from? Why are they, you know, if they have muddy boots, why are they walking into the library? And then the answers to those questions might generate other ideas. Now I'm going to get a little languagey. A girl wearing muddy boots walked into the Gruntville Library. No one had entered in months. Well, now I'm going a little bit post-apocalyptic. I'm wondering why no one had entered this library in months. This is stuff that really is starting to intrigue me. Questions are being asked. Or I just go backwards. I go, I don't want it to be a person. A dog walked into a library. Now, the word walked is imprecise here, and I might mess with it, but I'm curious. Dogs aren't supposed to come into libraries, especially alone, which this implies. And then I wind up combining things, and it's a little long, but you get the idea. A dog limped through the, grunt, the Gruntville library doors. Now I'm, no one had entered in months. I've got a lot of questions. I have a lot to work with. I don't know what direction this story is going to go or if it's going to be a story. Maybe it's told from the perspective of Weezer. I'm not sure. But I've gotten something which I would consider an interesting idea that I can ask more questions of. So this is how I'm developing some of these ideas from what is fairly abstract into something that is fairly concrete. Okay. So that's what I'm looking for in these bullet points from you. That's A and B. C, note that I say optional. Um, expand one of the two, one or two of the interesting ideas by unexpected things that might come from that idea. Just continue in this direction. Where does this idea lead you? What might you work with here? Um, again, these exercises are to test your ability to be interesting and evocative and write well, but they're also generating material for your midterm story and your final story. So maybe you want to put this away in your journal. You can come back to it. Great. Number three, challenges are optional, but they're really good for you. This is stuff you might want to write in your exercise for me just to look at. It might be stuff that you write in your journal, um, but they're extra little steps that take you further. Thinking as a digital writer, we become less bound by traditional stories that have a beginning, a middle, and an end. So now you might want to start thinking about how these ideas could take place in a digital universe, not a print universe where you just sort of write a story from A to B, but um, other ways of creating stories. Um, and we'll talk about this all through the semester. I'm giving you an example. You might talk about, you might take my fruit bar example, the secret that they eat fruit bars once a year, and you write like 20 of those little micro fictions. Now you don't put them together, you don't connect them, you don't put them in a particular order, or maybe you do. And maybe they're the collective secrets of an entire family. The idea is that you might do this in a hypertextual way that might create a picture of this entire family in a way that is more powerful than just telling their story from beginning to end. So think through how this digital, your ideas 
can work in digital formats. It might be Twine, it might be some other form entirely. Lastly, submit them to the assignment box. All right, um, generally speaking, exercises are going to be due on Monday at 2.30. Uh, this, is an, this is an exception for exercise one. It's due Friday at noon. Friday, this first Friday is a little bit of an exception in general. So Friday at noon. All right, I hope that helps. I will talk to you later.